Well, today, as we continue our devotion time in John, we're going to tackle one of the questions that I think actually comes up, not just in my mind, but maybe in many of your minds, as we're talking about the betrayal of Judas Iscariot. And and the question I think that as we read the Gospels, whether it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, the question that oftentimes comes to our mind is, how didn't the disciples know that Judas was going to betray them? I think that that's one of the things that as I read the passage, I come to that question, and we're going to tackle that today as we do our devotion time together. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years' period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us uh, by clicking subscribe to our channel and the bell for notifications. You're going to receive a devotional much like this one. We'll read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, let's take a look in depth at at this passage of Scripture today and really start thinking about how could the disciples have missed something that seems to be so obvious. This is Jesus speaking still. Verse 18, I'm not speaking of all of you. I know whom whom I have chosen, but the Scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I'm telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at the table, at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, It is he whom I will give this morsel of bread when I've dipped it. So when he dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him, and Jesus said to him, What you're going to do, do quickly. Now, now no one knew at the table why he said this to him. Some thought it was because Jesus had the money, because Judas had the money back. Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. So here we have what would seem to be just a straightforward account, right? that Jesus talks about somebody betraying him, that somebody's going to betray him. And and John, at the urging of Peter, you know, says, ask him, ask him who it is. And Jesus says, it's who I dip, you know, this morsel of bread and give this to. And he gives it to Judas. It's like, here's your answer right there. And Jesus says to him, what you're going to do, do quickly. And at that point, it's like everybody becomes confused. Well, he said somebody's going to betray him. He said it's the one who's going to, he's going to dip the bread and, and hand it to. He hands it to Judas. And then he says, what you're going to do, do quickly. Is, does he have a task? Is he supposed to go out and do that? How is it that they missed this obvious tell? Jesus actually revealed who it was right before Judas had left. And yet everybody is going to be surprised when Judas shows up with the garrison of, of troops. And so it's really interesting to me because we look at this and it's like after he raises from the dead, everybody knows he's talking about Judas. And and I I think that us reading from the outside looking in, we're like, well, you should have known ahead of time, right? All the accounts seem to say that it was Judas and you can see it. And Jesus made it very clear who that was. And people should know that it was Judas. And yet everybody is caught by surprise. Except, of course, Jesus, who knew that Judas was going to betray him. How is that? Well, I I think there's a couple of things we need to think about. Number one is this. Jesus often spoke in parables, parables that the disciples didn't understand. And so there are a lot of times that Jesus is teaching a lesson and they just don't quite get it. I mean, think about it. Peter has just been, you know, lightly rebuked by Jesus for not wanting to have his, uh, you know, feet washed by Jesus because Jesus was teaching a lesson during this time. So 
Could it be that Jesus is teaching another lesson? And he hands something off to Judas, and then he has a task for him. And this really doesn't have anything to do with finding out who's truly going to betray him. And maybe the whole betrayal thing is only a uh, metaphor anyway. Maybe we're trying to figure that out. I think there's a part of that that's going on. And we have to recognize that Jesus often stupefied his disciples in his teachings and often did the unexpected thing. So again, here, a straightforward answer might not necessarily be a straightforward answer. But I think there's also another thing that we need to look at. It's that, as Pastor Mark would often say, we are experts at self-deception, right? We, we can never take for granted the idea that we will deceive ourselves into not seeing things that are truly obvious. And, and the truth of the matter is we see this sometimes in courtroom cases. You'll see courtroom cases of, you know, young, young boys who have done heinous crimes. Maybe they're part of a gang or they've killed somebody or they've done ir- ir- irreparable damage to somebody else. And in the courtroom, there's all of this evidence. But then there's this mom and this dad or this community that comes by and says, but they're a good boy. Despite all the evidence that's been given, despite the actions that have taken place, despite the, the horrors that are there, it's almost the, the, that there's this, this self-deception of saying, no, it can't be this person. And I think that there's some of this going on with the disciples. No, Nobody would betray Jesus. Nobody would turn away from him. Nobody would treat him in this way. Uh, there, there's this idea of self-deception that even though Jesus is revealing it, no, none of us, none of us, there's nobody here that has those character qualities. And I think that looking back afterwards, once Jesus is raised from the dead, they go back and they see the thievery of Judas. They go back and see that, that Judas was truly the one looking to betray him for his own personal gain. Guys, we need to be very careful as believers in Jesus Christ, that we look with sober eyes to those who are around us and and to recognize things from God's perspective and not to have this, you know, these rose-colored glasses on people who may not be who we think that they are. So let's compare all things to scripture. Let's compare all things to the things that are that are actually set out before them and not have a differing standard or else we will find ourselves self-deceived like the disciples were not seeing the traitor within their midst so that's my prayer for you it's my prayer for me because we're supposed to guard the church of christ and so guess what that means we have to watch very carefully for those within our midst who may not be who may just simply be those wolves in sheep's clothing so Let's that, let that be a uh, lesson for us, that if it happened to the disciples who were with Jesus, it can happen to us as well. So let's keep our eyes first and foremost on Jesus and let him reveal those who are being faithful to him and those who are not. I hope that helps you today, helps up me today, and it gives us the courage to expose those who may not be walking with Christ the way they should. God bless you. I hope that uh, encourages you this day and challenges you, and we'll talk with you again tomorrow.